a prime minister of the Republic of Kenya, a.k.a. Baba, leader of the minority, Mwishmua Wandai, Meona Balozi Odembo Hapa, Pamadi Nasisi, senior government officials present, colleagues, esteemed colleagues from the fourth estate, Karibuni Sana, may I take this opportunity first and foremost to tend our sincere apology for the delay. We were to start this slightly earlier, but Hapaja Arabi Kenayo. And welcome to this press briefing. And at this juncture, we are going to have our two esteemed leaders update us on the status of Kenya's bid on the African Union Commission chairmanship or leadership. And thereafter, we'll have a Q&A. We'll have, we'll have about six questions. We will appreciate that the questions align with the subject of uh, this briefing. And thereafter, we'll have two photo session, one, a group photo, and two, we'll have the two leaders alone uh, on the photo. I thank you most sincerely. Without further ado, Your Excellency, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. The Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am pleased to have you all here. Thank you for turning up. Today, I want to update the nation on the status of Kenya's candidacy for the African Union Commission chairmanship. But before I proceed, let me thank the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga for the fruitful meeting and progressive discussions we have had this morning. As you already know, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga is Kenya's candidate for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission in the elections slated for February next year, that is 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, on this we have a visionary leader to fire up the African Union to greater levels. The Right Honorable Raila is a Pan-Africanist who naturally espouses the Think Africa Above All guiding principle of the AU Commission. Indeed, he holds dear the African Union's ambition of being a people-centered organization. The candidates' experience and leadership philosophy align with the AU's Commission's values of efficiency, professionalism, and respect for diversity. We have no doubt the candidate will pursue excellence in line with the continent's collective aspirations of the Africa we want in 2063, as framed in the AU's development framework of Agenda 2063. Let me lord our President, His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto, for fully endorsing the candidate and continuing to extensively engage with his counterparts in diverse regions of the continent. So far, our candidature has been positively received. The President has energized our foreign policy, thus successfully positioning our country as a champion of African affairs in the international arena. As the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs, I continue to amplify the President's Track 1 diplomacy by engaging my counterparts across the continent. We do all this for the good of our people, Kenya's national interest, and the prosperity of our continent. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the principle of interregional rotation, 
this is the time for Eastern Africa to nominate a candidate for the position of African Union Commission Chairperson. Therefore, as per the schedule of the AU elections calendar, the deadline for the submission of the regional nominations to the AU Commission is 6th August 2024, two months from now. Overall, the campaigns are led by the state with highly experienced and knowledgeable officers. The State Department for Foreign Affairs has established a campaign secretariat which includes the candidate's strategy team. The secretariat will prepare all the briefs for use by the candidate, develop campaign materials, including digital presence, and prepare for the public debate to be broadcast live to African citizens. This will take place six months before the election date. Currently, the team is following up preparatory and application documents together with requisite translations of the resume into six AU languages. That is French, English, Kiswahili, Arabic, Portuguese, and Spanish. This should be ready for submission to the AU Secretariat by the end of June 2024. An empirical campaign strategy has been developed which includes identifying opportunities, challenges, and risks that our candidature faces. Additionally, the campaign involves outreach programs Kenya is certain that our candidate, the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, has credentials and the passion to advocate for Africa's interests globally and champion for more opportunities for Africa and her people. I now invite the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga to make his remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Wycliffe. Uh, we have had a meeting with the Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, my brother, Honorable Wycliffe Musalem Dabadi, who led a team of government officials. This was in regard to my candidacy for the African Union Commission Chairmanship. I wish to reiterate the obvious that I am vying for a position in Africa, not in the government of the Republic of Kenya, but I need the endorsement of the government of Kenya for that African position. At this meeting, we exchanged notes on the state of the quest so far, the preparations from my side and the government side, and the next steps that require to be taken. The Honorable Prime Cabinet Secretary shared with me the situation and levels of, of preparation and commitment in the government. I have been very encouraged by the number of senior government officials offering to be part of this journey out of an understanding that we are in this as Kenya and not as partisan political parties. I appreciate the offer of support. I shared with the government team the situation and my levels of preparation from outside the government. I assured the team that on my own, 
I'm making every effort, tapping into my experience, relationships, and understanding of the continent to win the support of as many nations as I can. With committed and proper coordination between my team and the government, we should be able to clinch the seat. We agreed that coordination and synergy are going to be critical as we embark on the next critical steps that include the submission of my application. We therefore agreed on the need for efficiency, the need to cut bureaucracy, and unveil a well-oiled and flexible joint effort going forward. Like all campaigns, plans emerge and change suddenly. Demands arise and change suddenly. And we need to be able to respond to them as suddenly as they emerge. We also agreed on the need to understand the sensitivities in this quest that include national, regional, continental, and global dimensions to this quest, and therefore the need to always act responsibly, bearing all these sensitivities in mind. Once again, I thank Kenyans and the government for the support and the promise to keep updating the country on the status of the race. As I conclude, I just want to say that uh, I have been requested by many friends, because many people have been surprised and been wondering how I came to this. Many of my friends from outside Kenya approached me and told me that this position of AU chairmanship is becoming vacant next year. We have looked around the continent and feel that among the people who may offer themselves, you have the best credentials to take this organization forward. After lots of soul searching and consultations among my colleagues and friends, I made the decision to agree to accept the, the request. As you know that uh, I had been the African Union High Representative on Infrastructure Development for five years. That position gave me uh, an inside picture of what is happening in the AU, what the potentialities are in the AU, what are the challenges, and what are the weaknesses that they exist there. I believe that I have sufficient knowledge and experience to be able to move the AU forward. EU is an institution that was founded by the founding fathers of our nation. And their dream was an African that was united, an Africa that was cohesive, an Africa that was developed. The development of Africa can only be done by Africans. I am myself a Pan-Africanist and an Afro-optimist. Afro-optimists as opposed to Afro-pessimists. Afro-pessimists are the people who have given hope in Africa, say that Africa is a lost cause, it's a condemned continent. Afro-optimists are those who believe in the ability of the African people to develop Africa, that Africa the richest continent on the planet Earth in terms of resources is also the poorest in terms of development. This is a paradox that we want to solve. We want 
Africans to be able to take charge of Africa. We want to expand the communication and trade among the African people. I was telling my brother here that when I was a student in Europe in the 60s, it was a nightmare to travel across the continent of Africa, sorry, of, of Europe. In Europe, to move from one country to the other, you needed a visa. And if you did not have a visa to transit to one country, they arrested you at the border and returned you where you come from. Today, you can travel across the whole of Europe, the Schengen visa. You only enter somewhere and you can go to all parts of Europe. Yet in Africa, you still have a problem. Aliku Dangote, one of the most prominent African businessmen, was saying just the other day that he needs 35 visas to travel across the continent of Africa. His French counterpart, who is his competitor, does not need using a French passport. With a Nigerian passport, you need 35 visas to travel on the continent of Africa. You ask yourself, why? Why can you not have one African visa? It can, it can be done. We can connect the whole of this continent. And that's why I've been talking of the story of African lion. That the African lion must wake up now and claim the 21st century as the African century. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, having listened to Baba, I now wish to make the following concluding remarks. Indeed, despite the world becoming more fragmented and competitive, Kenya believes that multipolarity presents economic and geopolitical opportunities for Africa. Therefore, a whole of AU strategic approach to the emerging world will enable member states to project a common voice on global matters of consequence and enhance Africa's bargaining power for mutual benefit. And indeed, the Right Honorable Raila has summed this up. Therefore, for the continent to speak and act as one, the African Union Com Commission Chair will have to, the African Union will have to be more proactive and strategic in overcoming the persistent challenges that beset the African Union, namely funding shortages, logistical inadequacies, and the cyclic nature of conflicts. Additionally, the AU continues to grapple with cases of political instability and economic intricacies, weak international influence, and a new external influence driven by a new Cold War in the continent. As a continent, we therefore need to focus on dimensions that promote our unity and enhance sustainable development for the citizens of Africa. This will include infrastructural connectivity, and he has spoken briefly to that aspect from his previous assignment, reduction in costs of doing business in the continent, accelerating the realization of the visa-free program, and promoting a common language for Africa. Also important, is environmental protection of the climate sorry yes yes in environmental protection of the climate the continent should work in one voice to campaign for reform of the international organizations and global financial institutions 
the AU should be represented on the strategic international institutions, including membership to core decision-making organs of the UN. We shall promote functional non-alignment that strategically seeks to establish mutually beneficial relationships globally. I may just want to emphasize here that the chairman of the AU Commission also holds the seat for Africa on the G20 forum. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidate, Honorable Raila Odinga, is a renowned champion of Think Africa, above all. As per the AU values and inherently motivated by the AU vision, an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa driven by its citizens and representing a dynamic force in the global arena. Our continental body should increase Pan-African awareness among a critical mass of citizens and promote the Africanization of our elites to properly contribute Africa's development goals and discourses. Kenya therefore envisions an AU that drives the continent beyond silencing the guns to achieving peace, sustainable peace and security for collective prosperity. We have a long experience of supporting the AU and regional bodies as well as bilateral engagements to foster peace and security regionally and globally. We envisage an AU that will give a greater voice to the continental crisis the of, that have often become forgotten conflicts as other global crises elsewhere get huge humanitarian and political attention. As a government and a country, we wish the right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga God's speed in this noble endeavor for the continent. God bless Kenya and God bless Africa. Asante Nisante. Maybe there could be just a few questions. Thank you, Excellency. We'll have a uh, few questions. We have Bre Brenda Stepford. Thank you so much. I, I have a couple of questions that can be answered by both uh, the candidates, uh, uh, Right Honorable Raila Odinga no, no, and uh, no, 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 no. the Saudi. Oh, sorry. Um, no, no, I have a couple of questions that uh, could be answered by either the candidate, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, or the Prime Cabinet Secretary. Um, you have told us quite. Uh, you have told us about the benefits that Africa stands to gain from uh, Mr. Raila's candidature. What does Kenya stand to gain strategically for you going for that AU seat? And secondly, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary has told us that the President and yourself have been already reaching out to your counterparts from the region and beyond uh, the regional East African region, uh, trying to get support and push for Mr. Raila's candidature. What is the status of that push? Thank you. Oh, my name is Brenda Wanga from Citizen TV. Okay, it's dependent on a prosperous Africa. And we want to make it very clear that as Raila champions issues that affect the Africa continent, Kenya is part and parcel of what he shall be championing. So we are sure that as he moves across the continent, Kenya is also a beneficiary. The second aspect of it, from a Kenyan perspective, uh, we must look at it also as a national interest. This is not a localized issue. It's not a village challenge. This is a national interest for the people of Kenya as they prepare to offer leadership to the African continent. And as I said, we see an embodiment of those national interests in Raila's candidacy. Thank you. Well, uh, 
Kenya is part of Africa. So uh, uh, what Kenya is going to get is according to what the rest of Africa is going to get. If you improve matters in Africa, Kenya becomes a beneficiary. One example I want to give is the inter-African trade. Inter-African trade currently stands at only 15%. Africa trades very little with itself. Inter-European trade stands at 70%. Inter-Asian trade is now getting towards 60%. Even South America stands at about 30 percent. But Africa does not trade with itself for reasons some of which are actually solvable, or problems solvable. You see, there are non-tariff barriers which have been uh, in, uh, introduced by some African countries which makes it very difficult for goods to move from one African country to another African country. Secondly, there is infrastructure challenges that makes it very difficult for Africa to trade with itself. You know, Africa continental free trade area areas, as the high representative on infrastructure, I knew, I realized the challenges. Like you've been talking about intra-African highways, the Cape to Cairo, the Dakar to Djibouti, Dakar, Lagos, Lagos, Mombasa, and so on and so forth. We've been talking about the continental high-speed railway network, one Beira to Valmis Bay, one the old Benguela line, Lobito to Lubumbashi. The other one is the high speed railway along the coast from Lagos to Cairo. The other one is our Lapset, the Lamu Port, South Sudan, Ethiopia Transport Corridor, which as a representative of the AU on a, a high, high uh, on infrastructure. We actually extended from Juba through Bangi in Central African Republic to the port of Cameroon to create a land bridge that links the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean and opening up the interior of the continent, which are landlocked for trade. See, for example, Kenya grows tea. How does Kenya export its tea to Central African Republic? Between Kenya and Central African Republic, it's infrastructure. You have to find a ship that will go around the Cape, along the western coast, to the Cameroonian port of Douala, and then by road to Bangi. The French are there ahead of you. That's why they drink in Bangi Kenyan tea, Christian as English breakfast tea. But with an upset, we can be able to take our goods there. But this infrastructure cannot be developed country by country. You need to have a mechanism at the center that is coordinating funding for the infrastructure. If you want to do the upset, Kenya can only do its part up to the border with South Sudan. Then South Sudan needs to take it from there to the border with Central African Republic. Central African Republic takes it to Cameroon and to it there. But you need a centre to be able to coordinate funding, to mobilise funding for this infrastructure development, which are cutting across the continent. That is why those things have not been done. That's why even the trans-African highways have not been done, and so on. So, getting there, we are also talking about the high-speed uh, fiber optic network connecting all the African capitals. We're talking about open skies. 
to be able to move freely in the uh, uh, African airspace without so much impediment. At the moment, traveling across Africa is a major problem. Recently, when I was going to the funeral of uh, the president of Namibia, we chartered an aircraft here. We had to spend three hours at Wilson Airport waiting for clearances of airspaces, the, the transit countries. We had to get a clearance to fly over Tanzanian airspace, DRC, Zambia, Botswana, and Namibia itself. And it's expensive. The other day, I was in Salaam, going to Niamey, Asia. There, you had I spent 10 hours waiting. You need a clearance over Uganda, over DRC, over the Central African Republic, over Cameroon, Nigeria, and Niger. And that is what is making the air transport in the, in the continent so expensive. It is easier to move goods by air. It is easy to put the facilities across the continent. And then have also an African continental air traffic control. In Europe, you only need one permit and you can fly all over the countries of Europe. Here, you need to get permission from Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, uh, Kinshasa, uh, Lusaka, uh, going down those sides. So all these are what is making it uh, 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 and so forth. We've been talking about making the Nile River nav navigable so that you can be able to, tra 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 to move from the Mediterranean Sea to Lake Victoria. Ships can move from Europe and don't, don't have to go around the Horn to come to the, our coast the other side. You can go the right on the Nile to Lake Victoria and land there in Jinja, in uh, Kampala, in Kisumu, and in Mwanza. There are some of the, 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 the projects that will be done. And if you open up those way, Kenya will be a major beneficiary, uh, and Africa generally. So we have ideas which we think, if implemented, will improve the inter-African trade. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, in the interest of time, Your Excellency, we are unable to take more questions because the Prime says is needed somewhere in Nandi in the next few. <laughs> more? Okay, one question. Excellencies, my name is Mwang Maina from the ECLE Voice. First question to the former Premier. Some Kenyans and some Africans feel that uh, Nairobi fronting your candidature is a way of settling domestic political scores. Do you think you're exporting domestic politics to Addis Ababa? Uh, the other question to you, former Premier, it's about the Kenya stance, uh, Kenya, Kenya openly standing with Israel, which has been committing a genocide in Gaza. Do you think this could potentially impact your candidature uh, at the African Union Commission next year? Uh, because of such global geopolitical standing. Asante Mwangi, thank you. No, I mean, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Kenyan, and I've, as I mentioned, nobody has asked me, the, the Kenya government did not ask me. I made a decision myself that I want to offer myself to serve the continent. And uh, as you know, you cannot run for this position without being sponsored by your, uh, your, your country. Your candidature is not valid until your country has said yes. So I was myself pleasantly surprised that the government said they would support me. I was expecting them to say no. I don't know the reason why they said yes. <laughs> that is their own decision. It's not mine. I will I'll tell you why we said yes. We said yes because Raila is competent. Yes. And we are looking at Kenya's national interests and Africa's national interests. So this is not about our local issues. And we do not want, and we really want to get the fourth estate to help us to project the national interests of Kenya because it would be a first for Kenya. And it would be an opportunity for Kenya to offer leadership 
to the African Union. And Raila Amolo Odinga has the, got the requisite experience. As I said in another forum, he has seen both hot and cold. And Africa is beaming with both hot and cold. And Raila is required on the African continent. Your Excellency. My on the issue of Israel, it's just, I think yesterday, the Gaza uh, issue. I issued a very clear statement on behalf of the Republic of Kenya, where I said that Kenya stands for a two-state solution, so that Israel stands as a nation, and the people of Palestine should also have their state as a nation. So under no circumstances is Kenya favoring one against the other. What is important is that the conflict in the Middle East, like in other areas where there is conflict elsewhere, we call for a peaceful resolution as soon as possible because the humanitarian crisis is huge. Your Excellency, my name is Jeff Kiro. Regarding ESE, they have been pushing for one candidate. The newest kid on the block, Somalia, has its candidate. In the eastern region, we have Djibouti and Seychelles who also have candidates. Is it a concern to you that this might complicate matters considering the two-third requirement to clean the seat? And also, could you clarify on the composition of your campaign team? As I said here, that we are focusing on Kenya's candidacy. Yeah. Other countries that have their wish to front a candidate will speak about their own. Yes. But for now, uh, as far as we are concerned, we have a long journey to go to campaign, and our candidate is Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. And as I indicated in my earlier remarks, that the strategy is in place, and we shall be looking at all the challenges and opportunities as we go along. And I think I should also tell you that subsequent to this, I think the lady had asked, I want to emphasize that our president had, has also made several strides in talking to his counterparts across Africa. And all that, I'm sure, will count for something in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are now going to the next session, photo session, very quickly. Uh, can I be assisted to move the podiums, please?